عرفت الهوى مد عرفت الهوى عرفت الهوى مد عرفت الهوى وأغلق قلبي على العلا وأغلق قلبي على الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد نورك الساري ومددك الجاري واجمعنا به في كل أطوارنا وعلى آله وصحبه يا نور وعلينا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين we ask that these prayers and peace along with the Prophet Sallallahu and his folk be upon us, with them and among them by Allah's mercy and he's the most merciful of the merciful. And alhamdulillah, it's appropriate. Some of the athar that Shaykh Ibrahim Hafidhullah mentioned and we would have liked to benefit from him during the Q&A but some of the traditions that he mentioned in the life of the early Imams of this community, they point to the, the subject that we will, um, by Allah's permission, seek to address. And that is, we could say quite simply, and we will return to this, that the Muhammadan path is a path of love. Love of Allah, love of His Messenger, and love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, anyone who does a read of Allah's book, or the Sunnah, or Sirah, or Shamayil of the Prophet Sallallahu or the biographies of uh, the great Imams of the Salaf, if they're not reading Muhabba, um, they haven't taken it from its source. So for instance, a great Imam like Al-Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, who's actually a teacher of, uh, of Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad praying for him for 40 years after the prayer, what is that an expression of? That's an expression of love. And that's an expression of another very um, important quality uh, of ta'zim, of reverence. And it's not unlikely that one would see this from a teacher to a student, or excuse me, from a student to a teacher. However, also that was um, very strongly reciprocated from Al Imam al Shafi'i towards Al Imam Ahmad. So a Shafi'i once, um, he uh, saw in a dream that the Prophet Sallallahu said, give Imam Ahmad tidings of paradise along with a trial which will befall him. So he sent uh, a messenger to inform him of this. And Imam uh, Ahmad, when he heard this, um, he uh, thanked Allah for that and also uh, sought refuge from Allah from trials and he gave the shirt um, that he was wearing to the messenger of Imam al-Shafi'i. So this messenger, when he returned and he informed him what Imam Ahmed had done, he, Imam al-Shafi'i said, is that the shirt that was on his uh, own body against his skin? And he said, yes, it was. He said, I'm not going to take it from you. You know, he gifted it to you because you were the one who brought the tidings, but I would just like to wash it and keep the water uh, from which it was rinsed. So what? That's an attachment and a love, not just from a student to a teacher, but from a teacher to a student. And those are the relationships uh, among the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So if we uh, would like to know um, the straight path, or if we would like to know the Muhammadan path, um, if we want to know anything about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, we need look no further than to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, because Allah is the one who knows his Habib Everybody else, as a way al Qarani said to Sayyidina Umar and Ali, you only knew from Allah's messenger his shadow. The great Sahaba, that's what they knew of him was his shadow. As for his reality, his Lord knows him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Surah An'am, Al-An'am, verse 153, وَأَنَّ هَذَا 
sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uhu wa la tattabi'u subula fatafarraqa bikum an sabili dhalikum wassabikum la'allakum tattaqun Allah says and this one hadha and what we took from our shuyukh and is mentioned by some of the scholars of tafsir that hadha in this verse refers to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and hadha generally or more specifically refers to something that is perceptible to which you're directing someone's attention hadha sirati this one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is my path we can understand this in this verse of Allah's book he is my path this one is my path so what do we do with the path of Allah فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Then closely follow him. And Allah said this of him in another verse of the Qur'an. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Say, if you do love Allah, then what? Then follow me. In this uh, verse, in Am 153, فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Then follow him. And do not follow the other paths. فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ so that they would disrupt you or cause you to be divided away from what? His path. And that is a counsel that Allah gave to you that you may have taqwa. So the Prophet ﷺ, he is the path. He is Allah's path. That is the straight path. If we follow him, we will not be misguided from his path, from Allah's path, and we will be people of taqwa. So if we are to say that he is the path sallallahu alaihi wa sallamuhu alayhi and we must follow that that necessitates something and that is it necessitates that we know him it necessitates that we know him or know something about him or direct our attention to him sallallahu alaihi wa sallamuhu alayhi and then also that we know uh, something about following him and his path. Allahumma sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka alayhi wa ali. So who is this beloved sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? He is the one of whom Allah said, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is the one of whom Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily you are upon a magnificent character. He is the one of whom Sayyidatina Aisha said in the hadith of Muslim when asked by some of the tabi'een tell me about the character of Allah's Messenger. أَنْبِئِينِ أَنْ أَخْلَاقِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ O Mother of the Faithful, inform me about the character of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did she reply? She said, Alasta taqra ul Qur'an. Don't you recite Allah's book? Meaning, why are you asking me? Ask his Lord about him. Ask his Lord about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then he said, of course. Of course I recite the Qur'an. So then she said, فَإِنَّ خُلُقَ نَبِيَ اللَّهِ كَانَ الْقُرْآنِ Verily, the character of God's Prophet, of Allah's Prophet, was the Qur'an. So he is the one who personified the revelation. He is the one who said, أَدَّبَنِي Rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi thumma amana amarani bi makaram al-akhlaq faqala khud al-afwa wa'mur bil-urfi wa'aridan al-jahilin He's the one who said, my Lord taught me adab. My Lord, Allah. Allah was his teacher. The whole Quran could be understood as a lesson from Allah to the Prophet Muhammad The whole Sunnah could be understood as a lesson from the Prophet to us about the Quran. If you want to know the meaning of La ilaha illallah, what's the sharh of La ilaha illallah? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. If you want to know the, the meaning of Muhammadur Rasulullah, it's La ilaha illallah. 
This messenger is inseparable from the message. And Aisha said it, that's in, that's in Sahih Muslim. His character was the Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an, and, and if we think about it, there's something in that too deep to articulate. Because those of you that have studied a little bit of Tawheed, you know that uh, the Qur'an is Kalamullah. It's Kalamullah, it's a speech of Allah, and it's from His beginningless eternal attributes. So it's saying a lot. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, My Lord taught me adab, and He did so well. And then he commanded me to have all noble character. Saying, and this is 7199, the most comprehensive verse in character. Pardon, command that which is good or reputable and ignore those who are ignorant. One of the riwayat that is Hassan. When was this verse revealed? This verse was revealed on the day of the Battle of Uhud. One of the most difficult days of the Prophet ﷺ's life. When his uncle Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu was martyred. Assassinated really. Mutilated. And the Prophet ﷺ stood over the precious martyred body of his beloved uncle which had been mutilated and he'll say I'll do so to 70 of them in your place and for the young men we should understand that that's part of the message the Prophet ﷺ was a hero he was a hero who controlled his anger and only used it in a manner that was pleasing to Allah which is what we lack in our age so he stood over this and he said this Allah revealed this verse pardon command that which is reputable and turn away from those who are ignorant, or uh, overlook those who are ignorant. The Prophet ﷺ, um, and this is, as uh, Sidi uh, Sheikh Ibrahim mentioned, it's an etiquette of our knowledge, of this amana that someone not answer without qualification. And he recited the verse, فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask people who know if you know not. Some might say, I know. I know, you know, I got a PhD in this or a, a master's in this type of engineering. So, you know, why do I need a faqih? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask. Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam would ask. The Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Jibreel, ma hadha? What does this mean? I'm not going to claim that I understand Allah's speech necessarily. If, and if anyone understood it, he did. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Jibreel said, let me ask. And Jibril ascended the heavens and descended and said, O Muhammad, verily Allah commands you, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكَ أَن تَصِلَ مَنْ قَطَعَكَ وَتُعْتِيَ مَنْ حَرَمَكَ وَتَعْفُ عَمَّنْ ظَلَمَكَ Allah commands you to maintain ties with those who sever ties with you, to give to those who withhold from you, and to um, pardon those who oppress you. And he pardoned those who not uh, only oppressed him, but who martyred and mutilated his beloved uncle Hamza radiallahu anhu wa ardahu. That's who Muhammad is sallallahu alayhi wa oh, these, are, these are manifestations of the character of Muhammad which indicates uh, his beautiful spirit which is an indication of his reality which only Allah knows. Also on the day of the battle of Uhud and we're not the least bit hesitant in today's world when the Muslims are accused of, uh, of violence, what have you, to discuss the battles of the Prophet sallallahu we study his character first and foremost in these events, like this day, like the day uh, of Fat Mecca. So also on that day, he was wounded severely, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His helmet was smashed, his forehead was split, his lip was split, his uh, second row of teeth, his ruba'iyya was broken, his chain mail was driven into his precious cheek. Abu Ubaidah extracted it with his own teeth and lost his teeth from it. Radiallahu anhu. And when he was in this circumstance, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, and his face uh, bloodied and wounded, al awzai mentions, and the asal of this hadith is in the sahihain of Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ took something and began drying the blood from his face. And al awzai said that he said, 
that a drop of it not fall on the earth and not be a cause of Allah annihilating them, sending punishment upon them. And in the riwayah of the Sahih, the dua that he made is Allahumma ghfir qawmi fa innuhum la ya'lamun. O oh Allah, forgive my people, for verily they know not. In, a riwayah, in other riwayat, his companions at that point said, if you would only make dua against them, you make dua against them, Rasulullah. We're tired of this. They just hurt you. Enough is enough. He got angry. He said, Lam ub'ath la'ana. I was not sent to curse. What is cursing? It's driving others from Allah's mercy. And we have people from the ummah, that's what they do. You know, we had some youngsters, misguided youngsters, trying to drive us from the da'ir of sunnah, talking about people's beard length. Yani, ya jama'ah, yani. Fi ijtidhadat. Yani, nobody possesses Allah's mercy such that they can make it a little tiny link and put some people inside of it and some people outside of it. That is not the job of the Messenger of Allah, much less you or I. I was not sent to curse. بُعِثْتُ دَعِيَةً rahma. I was sent as an inviter. I was sent as a mercy. اللَّهُمَّ اهْدِ قَوْمِ فَإِنُّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ O oh Allah, guide my people, for verily they know not. So if we're going to travel his path, brothers and sisters, we have to direct ourselves to this individual. We have to study him. We have to know him. We cannot let anything disconnect us from him. صَلَّوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ so that's the first point. Get to know Sayyidina Rasulullah. If you or I want to know the path, and again, sit and study his shama'il. Like uh, Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, if you read in English, translated by uh, or authored by Abdullah Siraj al Deen, um, and it's translated. Like some of the translations of At Tirmidhi's shama'il. Like his seerah. Like any of his prophetic tradition, and in the widest sense, like any, any beauty in Allah's book, we have to know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Connecting to him. Connecting to him. This teaches, about, teaches us about Allah's Messenger, and this teaches us about Allah. Brothers and sisters, the first obligation upon you and I is that we know Allah. If you learn about the Messenger of Allah, and love the Messenger of Allah, you are learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's explicit for someone with the least bit of uh, ability to derive in the prophetic tradition. And that's our first obligation. That's our first obligation. So the Prophet sallallahu says, La yu'minu ahadukum, this is in Bukhari and Muslim. La yu'minu ahadukum, none of you believes. None of you believes. Belief is asl al-deen. Without, without Iman, there's nothing. There's nothing of the religion. None of you believes until what? Hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa walidihi wa nasi ajma'in. Until I am more beloved to him than his father, or you could say parent actually. Walid is more specifically parent. Parent, child, and all of humanity. So if we love the Prophet Muhammad, we know the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is that? That teaches us Iman. He also said in a hadith by Bukhari and Muslim, three things if they're in someone, they will what? They will not only have Iman, they'll taste Iman. Their Iman will be an experience, something that is tangible, not something that is merely intellectual. An intellectual iman is, is needed and of benefit, however it's not sufficient, particularly in a time uh, in which our faith is constantly attacked from every direction. So he said three things, if they're in someone, they will taste uh, the sweetness of faith. Man kan Allahu wa rasulu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma. The one to whom Allah and His Messenger are more beloved than everything else. Waman ahabba abdan la yuhibbuhu illa lillah. And someone who loves a servant and he does not love him for other than Allah. وَمَن يَكْرَهُ أَن يَعُودَ فِي الْقُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَن يُلْقَى أَوْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ And someone who hates, loathes, to return to disbelief after Allah saved him in the same way that he would loathe being cast into the fire. So again, knowledge of the Messenger of Allah, love of the Messenger of Allah, this, we could say, is a condition 
for our faith. Beyond that, we will say, you are looking for a path. I'm looking for a path. There are various paths, any path, any path, which doesn't strengthen your love of Allah, doesn't strengthen your love, and of, your love of the Messenger of Allah, and beyond that we'll even say, it does not strengthen your love for believers. That is not the straight path. That is not the path of Muhammad. That is not a path that will help you fulfill the shurut of faith or enter Jannah. Why do we say this? Muslim and others also narrate. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَسِي بِيَدِي And I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul. What soul? That dearest soul. The soul of Muhammad ﷺ. I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul. I swear by Allah. لَا تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا You will not enter paradise until you believe. So what? To enter paradise, faith is a shart. Faith is a condition. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا You will not truly believe, or we could just say you won't believe. You won't have this condition for Jannah unless you have its condition. What is a condition for faith? O oh, Rasulullah, until you love one another. How do we love one another, Messenger of Allah? Kafi then. If you say that this path is love, you say this path is iman, love of Allah and His Messenger, love of the believers for Allah and His Messenger, mutual love. How do we follow this path, O Messenger of Allah? Shall I not show you something that if you do it, you will love one another? Afshus salam bainakum. Spread peace among yourselves. Spread peace among yourselves. So the point being, we have a condition also of our faith that we love one another. And we have a path, a Muhammadan path to that love of one another, to that faith, to that paradise. And what is that? That's spreading peace. What is peace? Al-Aman. As-Salam al-Aman, they say, the Arabic lexicologists. Peace is security. Nowadays we talk about safe spaces. This is a safe space, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, that we spread peace among one another. That the brothers, like it's not like we're going to go into the masjid and dude, I'm going to stomp on your foot so that I believe I'm making the prayer row straight. Or I'm going to elbow you. Or I'm going to yani, attack you about your beard or your hijab or the very first thing I meet you, I'm going to make you feel unsafe. In your absence, I'm going to backbite you. That is not the path of peace. Anyone who tells you that they are on the path and they cause a lack of security and a lack of safety and a lack of um, the protection of that which is inviolable, that is not a path uh, that will lead to love or that will lead to a man. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimuna. The Muslim is the one from whom the Muslims feel secure or are safe from what? Min lisanihi wa yadihi. That's in Bukhari. Right? So we have, look at the world. Look at the Middle East. Look at the Middle East. How many a person who claims they're on a path, who claims they're representing Muhammad Wasallam, no one is safe from their hands. No one is safe from their hands. We're afraid for our lives. Honestly speaking. I've been places where, I won't mention it because someone would call me up and try to interview me. We were unsafe in the middle of the Muslim heartlands. Maniacs running around terrorizing people, hurting them, speaking ill of them. You know, like we mentioned, even in the, in the, in the blog sphere, we're not safe from people. Some shahab wants to mock your beard. Yani. Allah, I wish Allah would grow me a fist. I really wish that. But a lot of Africans, you know, and also you Asians, some of us just don't grow hair. But we're not safe. Why? Because ma, they didn't study that way of love, that way of adab, that the likes of Imam al-Shafi'i took from the likes of Imam Malik, gave to the likes of Imam Ahmad, rahimahumallahu ta'ala. So that's a condition as well. Again, that we have love and then we have a means that we spread peace. That we follow the akhlaq of that one who when asked to pray against his enemy, against his enemy, much less his friends, 
He said, I'm not sent to curse. I'm sent as mercy and da'wah. Oh Allah, guide them. I remember I was in Damascus and this miskin youngster, you know, from an, an area where, uh, again, like a lot of our young people, he was from a certain European Union country. We met in Damascus. You know, a lot of young people, they're radicalized and they run off with these maniac groups. We were in the University of Damascus and Damascus is what it was. Those people were oppressed. You know, there was uh, Arabic teachers there that looked like, you know, Barbie or something like that. Um, in any case, he said, you know, I'm just so angry. I'm just going to pray to Allah against these people. Ya jama'a, yani. We prayed for them. Our Prophet ﷺ didn't pray against Quraysh who injured him. How are we praying against the believers and not praying for them again? So spreading peace. La ilaha illallah. So we said, we have to know him. To learn about him, we direct our attention to him. Love stems from knowledge. If we love him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a condition. It's not enough that we just claim that we love Allah and His Messenger to have faith. If we have faith, our love, our faith has to govern our emotions so that our relationships with others and everything around us are governed by our faith. So we start to love the believers. We don't look for their faults. We look for their virtues and cover their faults and spread peace among them. We don't attack them. We don't hurt them. This is the path. So then if we say that, and then with this we'll conclude, um, the lesson that we took, and if we, if we just said one thing, this would be enough. Uh, one of the, um, the, the shuyukh that we met, he was actually a servant who was actually a very concealed person um, who had traveled a very long distance in his own growth um, to the point that he had been given a very high ijazah in knowledge and you wouldn't know it. He would just see him as a teacher. He said to me when there was someone behaving harshly, um, someone mistreating uh, others or just behaving in a way that hurt feelings and disrupted relations. And the person was actually a very good person. Um, he just needed some direction himself. Uh, he said to me, imploring me to remedy this situation again where there's not spreading of love, there's not spreading of peace and security. Abdul Karim at Tariq, Kulluhu Hub. He said, Abdul Karim, the path is entirely love. And that was, that was pretty much the lesson I learned in, in Damascus. Um, and later, uh, we looked at teachings of the shiyukh and verses of Qur'an. Um, and if we were to say, you know, if you were to say, Abdul Karim, you know, you said a lot of things, they sound nice about the Prophet said we've heard that before. Give us something practical. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ um, say, if you do love Allah, then what? Make ittiba' وَأَنَّ sirati mustaqiman فَاتَّبِعُوهُ And this is my path, straight, follow it. Um, follow it, it, him, or follow me, in the verse we're citing, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me in what? Allah will love you. Um, so that is our path, simply explained, uh, to becoming like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who, as we said, could be explained as a straight path, or who we could say was the one whose character um, embodied the Qur'an, is that we closely follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Um, and then, in simple terms, he laid out for us um, the way to follow his path. And this tradition is also something that the, from its beginning to end describes uh, a journey of coming closer to Allah and a path. And that is the, uh, the Sahih Hadith of Bukhari narrated by uh, Abu Huraira that is a Hadith Qudsi in which Allah says, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ If someone has enmity towards one of my awliya, towards someone who I've cared for them or brought them near or whose Obedience was continuous. They translate it saints. They translate it as friends of Allah. The word in Arabic is wali. Um, then Allah says, I declare war on him. And then Allah in this hadith describes that path. And again, in simple steps for you and I. And he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي لَا وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا فَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ my servant doesn't draw nearer to me by anything dearer to me or literally more beloved. And look again, this path is one of love of attachment to Allah and His Messenger. 
My servant doesn't draw nearer to me by anything more beloved to me than what I've made an obligation upon him. So that's our first step, brothers and sisters, is fulfilling our obligations. And your and my first obligation is to know Allah. Learn about Allah, become attached to Allah. And as we mentioned, a great door of that is, uh, is learning about the Messenger, وسلم, particularly his beautiful character, but also his person. How he slept, how he sat, how he drank. Just being attached to that beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa And then this servant is, has a burning desire to be close to Allah, to be like the Messenger of Allah, and thus dear to Allah. And he says, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ My servant continues to draw near to me by voluntary works, by extra works. He doesn't, or she doesn't settle with the obligations out of a shawq, a longing, and a passion, they do extra. Seeking nearness until what? Allah says, until I love him. And then how is that servant who's beloved? That servant is like the Prophet ﷺ, who was beloved. That servant represents uh, Allah on this earth. As the Prophet ﷺ did, his character was the Qur'an. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ كُنْتُ سَمَّهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِي وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْتَشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّذِي يَمْشِ بِهَا When I love that servant, I am the hearing with which he hears, the sight with which he sees, the hand with which he grasps, the foot with which he walks. When this servant asks me, I will grant them. Uh, and if they seek refuge, I will give them refuge. This person becomes an Abd Rabbani, a lordly servant, someone who's, who embodies uh, the perfections of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, they're like that. They've become something, what? By following these simple steps of first, uh, prioritizing obligations. Second, um, following uh, the Prophet ﷺ in abundant voluntary works with an attachment until they became like him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They made ittiba until what? Yuhbibkum Allah. Until they were beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, um, if there's just one uh, point with which we'll close, Again, if you're looking for a path and you're choosing among various paths, the path that strengthens not just your love of Allah, because everyone's going to make that claim. Your love of Allah's Messenger, especially, that was the characteristic of the Sahaba, or the essence of the Salaf. Abu Sufyan, he said, when he, uh, Zayd ibn Dathinna, who was getting ready to be. Uh, executed, his head being chopped off. Abu Sufyan said, I ask you in Allah's name, would you like for Muhammad to be in your place and you are safe with your family? He said, I swear by Allah, I wouldn't want to be safe with my family uh, while Muhammad is being tricked, pricked by a single thorn. And then Abu Sufyan, he said, I never saw anyone love anyone like the companions of Muhammad love Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was what made them companions. That's the way of the Salaf. And then, but not only that, because people will make that claim as well, it teaches you love for the believers. It teaches you love for others, not an evil opinion of others. It teaches you to spread peace, security, everyone's safe from your tongue. They're not running around backbiting. And there's people, they, run, they have pamphlets, all kinds of things, Twitter accounts, they run around backbiting. See someone with knowledge come, those people disappear. They disappear into the shadows. As soon as that person turns their back, they'll be attacking his back. That's not a quality of uh, the Prophet ﷺ's path. Um, that is a criteria you might use uh, for those from whom you take knowledge. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Please excuse me, especially if I've taken more than my time. <laughs>